America is often viewed as the peak of unhealthy eating. Ordering takeout every night, eating far too often, eating fast food, are just some of the stereotypes that have been attached to this country. It doesn't help that food traditions and diet culture have become a problem within recent years. Most of it coming from not eating properly, cutting out certain micro and macronutrients that some diets suggest that just aren't healthy for you. One of these problems that has come from this is obesity. Obesity has become a huge problem within the United States, with it currently sitting at a 42 percentage rate. That's an increase of 12% from what it was just 20 years ago. Obesity can come with some serious problems that can affect your long and short term health if not addressed and properly taken care of. However, it's not doomsday just yet, and there are resources and ways that people have been looking to be healthier. One of the reasons that it's sold hard is that the word diet has a stigma. Diets can be intimidating, but one of them that has risen to popularity is intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting is a special diet that allows a person to follow it three to four, five days of the week and still see the benefits of it. This allows people who struggle committing to a diet to still follow it. But how can intermittent fasting affect those with obesity and its effects? Well, first we have to talk about what intermittent fasting is and what obesity is. Well, intermittent fasting is a time-restricted feeding period that may improve metabolic health and improve with weight loss. So no, not this kind of fast, this kind of fast. Most intermittent fasting practices are a 16-hour fasting period followed by an 8-hour eating period. It doesn't entail cutting out any specific macros like protein, fat, or carbohydrates out of someone's diet, just limiting the time that they can eat in order to control eating habits. It's designed to use the fat storages in the body instead of the energy coming from your diet. So during those 16 hours, instead of your energy coming from your carbohydrates, that energy comes from your fat storages. Now, obesity is when your BMI is over at 30, but really it's just caused by the overconsumption of calories more than someone can burn on a daily basis. Now, BMI is a really outdated form of gauging health but it really is still used to identify obesity ranges. It's recommended that a person eat two to three meals a day, but usually an obese person eats on average four to five, leading to extreme overconsumption. The key to overconsumption doesn't necessarily mean unhealthy eating, but it most commonly comes from unhealthy eating. Like leading an unhealthy diet, not eating enough fruits and vegetables, and eating too big of portions having liquid calories like juice or soda that are really just empty calories in the end. Inactivity is also a factor because you are not burning off the excess calories that are gained in the overconsumption. Obesity, along with a variety of other things, can cause cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure, and high blood sugar. A study done by PubMed found that people with type 2 diabetes are obese 86% of the time. But what is type 2 diabetes? Well, the majority of the time, the pancreas releases insulin in the body to its receptors. But with patients with type 2 diabetes, they are insulin resistant. So their receptors don't receive insulin as well. Therefore, the pancreas has to increase production of insulin to account for that resistance. The problem is, this leads to high blood sugar, and in some cases, the pancreas ends up not being able to produce any more insulin at all. Treatment for type 2 diabetes is usually with insulin therapy, a clean diet, like intermittent fasting, and an active lifestyle. So how could intermittent fasting be helpful to those who are obese and to those who have type 2 diabetes? Well, research shows that people who follow intermittent fasting have an increase of insulin sensitivity all over the body, making it easier for the body to accept insulin from the pancreas. This reduces the output of insulin from the pancreas and inherently lowers the blood sugars all around the body. This will help with the symptoms of diabetes, and since the cost of insulin is so high in the United States, it will be better financially for the diabetic patients as well. When it comes to obesity, intermittent fasting is great for weight loss, with an average of 3-8% to weight loss over a 3-24 to week period. The 16 hours spent fasting stops a person from overeating and overconsuming. A person has has only a chance to eat two to three meals a day, forcing them to eat a regular amount within a reasonable portion. 
Another metabolic effect is norepinephrine, a hormone that breaks down fat in the body according to a research done by Healthline. This is how intermittent fasting promotes weight loss. During the 16 hour period, the body does not have any carbohydrates to use and turn into energy. So the body uses its fat storages to produce energy. That's where norepinephrine comes in. If it can increase the output of norepinephrine throughout the body, it will be able to break down fat better for energy, reducing the fat content all around the body. But you're probably thinking, is that all that intermittent fasting has to offer? Well, I'm glad to say no. And a research done by the Cleveland Heart Lab shows that intermittent fasting lowers inflammation from cholesterol buildup around the body, leading to a decrease in cardiovascular disease. In that same study, they also found that the same group of people had fewer blood sugar spikes and lower cholesterol. Cholesterol is a big problem with cardiovascular disease health because it leads to excess inflammation. Lowering two of them reduces the risk of getting it. It's important because cardiovascular disease is the leading cause of death in the United States. Practicing intermittent fasting for anyone, but specifically those in the obese population in the U.S., could potentially save their lives and subdue the effects of the diseases they already have. It's important for people to hear the benefits of intermittent fasting. As the obesity epidemic gets worse in the US, more people need to see how beneficial it is and how it can save them from their later health effects and diseases that some people are already suffering with. The best part is that intermittent fasting isn't your traditional diet. Studies have found that practicing it at least three to five times a week show the same metabolic effects. So you don't even have to practice it consistently. As a summary, intermittent fasting would be great for someone who is obese and for anyone in general. It improves the metabolic hormones such as insulin to target and improve the life of those obese people with diabetes. Other hormones like norepinephrine improve the body's ability to lose weight while targeting its fat storages. It is also good for helping people with other problems than obesity like cardiovascular disease, which have historically been a problem for the obese population. It lowers blood sugar, cholesterol, and blood pressure all around the body. I hope you learned something today about intermittent fasting and make a choice that it can improve your life. Thank you for watching.